disappear. You say, give me some. I think that I can go on. Hello, everybody. Good morning or afternoon, I guess, depending on where you are. Speaking of, where in the world are you today? I would love to hear in the chat. Um, we'll see where everyone's joining us from. Good morning from Austin. Hello. Um, I'm here in Pennsylvania. Michael's in Connecticut. We are East Coast time. But if anyone is West Coast time, props to you for getting up early on your weekend morning to come and join us today. We really appreciate it. And I hope that you will find it worth your time. Colombia, Nigeria, Brazil. Oh, we've got people from all over joining us here this morning. Welcome, welcome. Oregon, yes. Guys, dedication, dedication on your weekend. I appreciate it. Maryland, New York, Florida. All right. Wow. We've got a lot of people here. If you haven't met me before, I am Taylor. I am going to be facilitating this conversation. I'm one of the hosts here at Clicked. Joining me is Coach Michael. Would you like to speak a little bit about yourself and introduce yourself to our viewers today? Oh, as it says, Michael Drzewiecki. I'm the Director of Salesforce Engineering at Privia Health. Golden hoodie. It's over there. Uh, lots of certifications, a lot of super badges, always learning. I learned stuff here as well. So looking forward to all the interactions we're going to have today. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to do a bit of an overview in the prompt. We'll get into our topic discussion, and then we'll have time for live feedback and question and answers. So if you've not joined us here before at Clicked, these are our core Clicked principles. We are here to learn from each other. This is a little different than what you may have done before. If any of you have been to a lecture series or watched other um, learning experiences, this one's interactive and is so reliant on you, the learners. So it's a little bit different. We're all here to bring what we have to the table so we can collectively learn together. Because of that, it is a safe place to try. There is not one right way to do something, especially with this topic, with flows. Um, you can give 10 people this task and they'll come up with 10 different ways to get it to work. So there's not one correct way to make this happen. And lastly, we're here to have fun. Guys, it is Saturday morning and you're choosing to spend your weekend here with us and we so appreciate it, but we're gonna make it a good time and make it worth it for you today. All right, so how can you interact in this session? Well, there are a few different ways that you can come and be with us today. One is to raise your hand to get live feedback or if you haven't completed the challenge yet, you can work alongside us and work on your flow um, so that you can get it running. And here are some other ways. The chat box, everyone see in the chat box, we asked where everyone was from and we're getting those responses there on the side. You can come up on stage and ask questions live. Maybe your flow isn't working, you need some debugging, you need some help there. Um, you can come up and with it, share your screen and we can work through it with you. And lastly is the question and answer box. On the side, there's two little bubbles. One says Q, one says A. That is the question and answer box. If you have a dying question, a question you need answered, or just something important, go ahead and throw it in there because sometimes the chat runs so quickly that I can't keep up and I might miss your question. So um, if it's something that you really want to hear or speak to, uh, put it over there in the box and I'll make sure we get to it before the end of the session. All right, here is our scenario and our task. You have been hired to come in as a Salesforce admin for Stanford D School. Up until this point, they've been using Google Forms and Sheets to manage course enrollment. They recently hired your team to adjust the system to begin using Salesforce to manage course enrollment as there has an increase in demand for expanded course offerings. Stanford is also interested in increasing analytics, automation, and reporting abilities. You will be working closely with Peter Wu, VP of Technology, to complete this project the task. Review the stakeholder requests and build a flow diagram in preparation for building out the flow. You may create a flow diagram that focuses on one or both requirements, whichever you decide is best. Consider the fields that would allow you to build these flows. We recommend using Lucidchart to build your flow diagram, as well as format for visualization closely resembles as their format closely resembles that of Salesforce flows. So you can start by mapping it out, use the insights from the business scenario, and then outline your main steps. Okay, if you're new to Airme, if this is your first experience with us today, I want you to look for that raise hand button. 
Um, if you see it on the right hand side of your screen, there's a button that uh, looks like a hand. If you want to hit that now for me, please. Um, I want you all to get understand how to do it. <laughs> so go ahead and yeah, put your hands up. Okay, great, great. So then you can just click it again and that will put your hand back down. Okay, so this is how it works, guys. You share your work and then you'll get feedback and we can all learn together. So if you are ready to come up here on stage, um, feel free to put your hand up now and we will pull you on up and we can work through what you've got. Okay, Salafa, let's get you up here on stage. Hello, how are you today? Good. Good. Can you, me? can you share your screen with us so we can see what you got? At the bottom, there should be a square with an arrow in it. We call that the square arrow. If you want to go ahead and hit that, you can pull up your screen that way. Here we go. All right, cool. So we can see Airme. So go ahead and navigate to the tab that you would like to present and we can go ahead and get started. Excuse me, what did you say? Yeah, so right now we're seeing us on AirMeet. So if you can go ahead and navigate to the tab that you would like us to see, if it's in Salesforce or Lucidchart or wherever. Oh, where should I hit? I don't know, girl. What do you got to share? Um, right now we're just seeing us. So you've got to. Um, oh, yeah. Salesforce? Sure. If that's what you would like to pull up. Mm hmm. What, well, I don't know. Okay, try to um, go ahead and X out of here. Stop presenting and then go ahead and present mm -hmm. again and then share the window where you have the tab that you would like to use. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. This one? Uh, I can see your Gmail account. So go ahead and navigate to where you'd like to be. Are you having some trouble, Salafa? Can you can you sort it? Yes. Yeah, I have some troubles. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. No, that's okay. So you're gonna hit that square arrow button, that present to the audience button, and then you're gonna mm -hmm. click share screen. And after you mm -hmm. click share screen, it'll ask you which window you would like to share, and you're gonna have to click on the one that you want everyone to see. It's not, it's not giving me any option, just the email on the, on your screen. Um, so there should be an option on the top. It says share tab or share window. Do you see what I'm talking about when you pull up share? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's your Chrome tab. So um, where where do you have? So I'm only seeing at the top your inbox and your Airme. So you have to have your Salesforce org open or um, whatever you're trying to show with us has to be available for us to see. Okay.
I think I have in trouble. Can I can I try later maybe? Sure. Yeah. We don't have anyone else um, in the in the queue at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna take you off stage, and um, we will pull up Obiemi. He's here, um, and okay. then we will try you again in a little while. Okay. Hey. How are you? I'm fine. Opie, right. can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Do you want to share your screen? Okay, yeah. Do you need help? Okay. Uh, can, can you see my screen now? Uh, yeah, we've got it. Yeah, cool. Okay, so yeah, this is this is what I was able to I was able to create. Um, although I've not been I've not been able to like debug. So now let me let me show you the yeah. So what I did was I created I created and since we are using lead, I created a a field on lead, which is officer name and um, officer email to so that the um course uh representative will be added to the student record here i'm i'm assuming this lead is the student record then after that i have this um <clears throat> i have this field here this object here rather for enrollment so it will store in the enrollment dates enrollment ID, the, uh, the enrollment officer, which is a lookup. And then I have this other, other object here too, which is for the enrollment officer itself. So um, I use the lookup, uh, yeah, a lookup relationship from this enrollment, from this enrollment to the enrollment officer object here, as well as a lookup from this enrollment looking up to the lead, the lead record, the student record, this is it, the student name. So, so yeah, yeah, we have it. So now this is what I was able to create. I'm not sure. So now starting. <clears throat> now I, I use this criteria here. When, when a record is created or updated, I have this, um, this field on the, on the lead record, which is the major, <clears throat> I wasn't able, I wasn't um, able to think enough about the about the department. So I just used the major. The major is a pick list field, and it has um, it has only just the departments that are there. Let me let me try if I could if I could uh, see it. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh -huh. So now, this is the pick list field, psychology, engineering, biology, and all that. Now, um, back to this. So now, uh, the requirement is that on the lead record, which is the student, I assume, uh, it should not be null. That's the record I, I choose. That is the entry criteria for this. And then uh, I use actions and related record. Now, after this, I use a get record here for... Uh, I use a get record here for the um, for the enrollment officer. Yeah, the enrollment officer get record, which is that the faculty on the enrollment officer should be equal to uh, the major on the lead record. That is the criteria I used for this. And then um, I have an issue here. I have an issue here. I am not good with using uh, loop. And that is why I didn't set this to all record. So I was only, this is what I was only able to think about, only the first record in the requirement. Now, after that, I I updated the I updated the lead record here. The lead record here, using the criteria that the name is equals to the record full name that is the lead the lead record that triggered the flow the name is 
is the record full name. And then I set my field to update the list record as the rep name. These are my resources here. I have my resources here, which are the variables now. The, the rep name and the rep email is just a variable that stores the the um, enrollment officer name and email address. Uh, this third one, I, I don't think I used it. Yeah. So now, so these are my variables here, and these where I reference them. Now, apart from apart from this, yeah, after the after the updating student record, which means that the name and email of the rep will be saved on the lead record, assuming that the lead record is for the rep. Then after that, we send a notification to we'll send a notification to our reps. Um, coming okay. We'll send a notification to our rep here. Uh, the body here is a text template. And then um, <clears throat> the recipient email address will be our rep's email, which is the variable that I set it in the beginning, as well as the ID, which is the variable name. And then, yeah, this one is just to the subject for updating. So if we check this, uh, the resource for the text variable that I set, uh, student email notification yeah student email notification so i use the student name with this um contact the student names record has been updated so that's just the simple um, message email message i was trying to use notification here but i don't understand it so i just leave it at email message for the action here then um after this i created the follow-up here a follow-up email with, with a scheduled part for um, six hours. Now, the, the other thing that I couldn't get, but what I did was the time source, I used the last modified uh, dates. I'm not sure if this is right or if this is what I should use. At first, I was actually thinking of um using tax but that is that is a whole lot of um a whole lot of exercise for me and i'm not i'm not too good I'm, I'm just a beginner with flows but this is what i could um this is what i could get so i i referenced the last modified date and then six hours after although i know that this flow has an error in the sense that um even after updating this record here even after updating this record here which is the last modified date six hours after the rep will still get a follow-up email in either case so i don't know how to modify it and then yeah this is what i was able to to come up with so your feedback sir <clears throat> so you built quite a lot did you flow this out in lucid or something similar or did you just jump right in i jumped right in i don't know how to use lucid chat right well you don't have to use lucid term even if it's pen and paper i highly recommend kind of sketching this out before you just jump in and building because then that, that controls yeah. some of the sprawl right so for instance the enrollment officer uh you did a couple different things there right you created your own your own object to just to store that um, yes my question would be did you consider you just using the user object or the contact object uh, for no i cons i i only i only used a custom object for it since there are no out of the box object to support that so I created a costume object for the enrollment officer as well as the enrollment in itself. All right. So who is at so who from the scenario, who is actually working those leads? You know, who who is the lead assigned to to move forward with enrollment? Hmm. I have no answer. Hmm. I'm sorry. Right. So so if if the enrollment officers are working the leads themselves, then that would be the user object. You wouldn't need to create any cust anything custom around it. Or if the 
or if their enrollment officer exists in Salesforce for any reason, like they're in here viewing enrollments, they would have a user record. So I would, they would have a user record on that you could then reference and then look up that enrollment op as a lookup rather than building another custom object. Does that make sense? Oh, yes. yes, yes. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, what, and I think at the beginning you said you weren't able to debug some part of it. Was there any specific questions you wanted while, while you were on screen? Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, um, my, the most pressing issue where, where I, I have an issue is this scheduled part here. This scheduled part. The question, the question says that, um, the question says that uh, six hours after inactivity with the leads, that is when, that is when the, the scheduled part should be triggered. Mm -hmm. Now, where I had an issue is, I was thinking of adding a tax object here, and then if there are no calls, nothing, nothing like that. If there are no calls, no email sent, um, six hours after, then this part should be should be enabled. But as it is now, with what I've done, I am sure that with this last modified day that I referenced, although there are no other dates I could I could use here. So this last modified day, which means that. After this record has been updated here, because I put it here, update student record here, then this follow-up email will still be sent after six hours. So now my question will now be, if I would add a tax here, how will I, how will I go about it? That's what I really don't understand. I've not worked with um, tax or logging a, an email or phone activity in flows before. Right. So yeah, this is a great example. Thanks for bringing this up. So the first thing we want to do is look at your scheduled path that you have out on the right side of the screen. And you, you want to actually change the time source. Let's go ahead and do this live. Uh, okay. Change the time source to lead created. Lead created. Okay. No, uh, keep going down. Yep. Uh, we create it as an actual date. See at the middle? There you okay, go. Lead created uh, date. What yeah. they're asking for is six hours after the lead was created. So now you, now we're set up here. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, it does. So now six up. So if we if we stopped right here, the enrollment officer would get an email every time at six hours was reached, right? So we want to, what we want to do is add a decision now. So above your email action, go ahead and click that little dot. And then add a, add a decision. Yep. Okay. So uh, for the video. Yeah, so like inactive, something like inactive lead. Okay. Uh, inactive leads. Okay. So this is where this this uh, didn't, you can just use the new outcome right here. Label that one over six hours. Okay. Over six. And then under the okay. resource, this is where we're going to check. Now we want to check that last modified date. So, okay. So, uh, last modified date, uh, which will be the lead record. No, the lead file. Right. Hope I'm right. The lead prior. No, just this. this uh, this regular lead, lead record. record. Yep. Okay. The lead record. Look, we don't wouldn't necessarily have a lead prior because we're looking for it's the hardest thing to look for in Salesforce is when something didn't happen, <laughs> right? Because oh, there's no okay. 
Yeah, so last modified date. Last modified date, okay. And then you want to change to, and now we need to come up with. Um, what, what would the operator be? Last modified date yeah. is. I'm, I'm, I'm strategizing that one on the fly. Let's see. Cool. Let's, let's go with, for the purpose of this, it won't be exactly to the requirements, but just for the purposes of under, do does not equal. Okay. Uh, does or not equal. equal or, or equals. I'm sorry, equals. Equals. Okay. Then record again. Record. And then the created date. Okay, does not equals oh the created date. Okay. So let's, and let's go change that label up top to better reflect what we're actually doing in this particular condition. Uh so call that call that label. No, inact is perfect there. But call the label okay. uh lead not worked. Okay, go ahead and save that. Uh, should I click done? Yeah, go ahead and hit click done. Yep. Okay. Need not work. Okay, and what what we need to do is go ahead and move. We want to delete the line under default outcome. Easiest way to do that is up top. Go to free form instead of auto. Okay. And click, click on where it says default outcome. And then hit delete on your keyboard. Oh. Okay. All right. Now you can switch it back to auto. Oh, wow. That's okay. Uh, okay, yep. loose position. Okay. All right. So, so. I wanted to get this logic on the board for everyone to see. So now what you're doing here, you're not you're not checking six hours yet, but you are checking where or not they touch the lead at all. If they did not touch the lead, then they get that follow-up email. So we have the right business process. Now to go to go to six hours, we would have to actually create a formula field on the flow to do that comparison. And we would look at that instead. But I think so. That would be your next step to kind of look at that formula field and see if you can sort that out. But go ahead and test it like this. I always recommend testing incrementally so you can see if things are working or not to your respect. And since there's no delay, you should be able to go ahead and the only delay mm -hmm. is up top, doing the six hours up there. Actually, you know what? Now I'm thinking about it, we're actually good because the things on six hours. So if they haven't touched in six hours, yeah, you just we just solved the requirement. Okay. Nice. Uh, well, I. Do you understand I how we solve this department, though? <laughs> okay. Uh, hang on. Will not let you activate it. Um. Even I got this four error on saving. Uh, create. I got this. Well, go ahead. I don't know why it's it's saying some prevent that but can cause problem. Okay. Can I can I run like this with this? Yeah, notice? go ahead and run. Okay. Whoa, fail to start because the provided values are not valid. Whoa. Well, if, if you're going to debug uh, a record trigger flow, you need to give it the record ID. A record ID. Uh, so, right from the start, yeah? 
No, 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 not there. Just when you click on debug. Yeah, so okay, I think um, only a BME. I think the issue is that you ran it instead of debugged it. Correct. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, save and debug. I'm st I'm still getting these four prompts here. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Okay. Debug. So don't hit run just yet, because right now you're de debugging your run immediately. What we want to debug is your your new path. Okay. Don't hit it yet. Don't hit it yet. Right. Nope. <laughs> no. Okay. No triggered. No, not triggered. Yeah, because uh, I'll show you why. Go ahead and hit de debug again. Debug. Okay. All right. Don't click anything other than what we walk you through. So at the top, okay. you want to change it from run immediately to that new path we just created. To send an uh, email. This... There, you there you go. Okay. Okay. And down below, you need to create a lead. Uh, you search for your a lead in your system. Do you have oh. a lead record in your system? Uh no, let me let me create one. Let me create one. Yeah. Uh, hey everybody! While he's working on that, I threw up a poll um, asking how everyone's doing with the skills challenge. So feel free to go over there and vote, so we know where you're at and we know how to continue the rest of the session. So while he's creating that follow, just a little commentary of how everyone should be approaching this. Test as you go. Uh, so at this point, we probably should have had quite a few leads because you want to test as you go, not, not build 12 stages of automation, then try to test it because it's super hard to really nail down what where your problem's at, right? So. So like we just did, we added one condition. Now we're going to test that one condition. So if that one condition doesn't work, we know exactly where we need to go. Hmm. That's for everyone, not just you, sir. All right, not that, that, that. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> okay, let me, let me try it again, okay. Uh, yeah, this. Okay, so. All right. Now, the reason it did, the reason this one finished the way it did because your lead is not six hours old. So to bypass Ooh. that, you, you need to check that first box where it says skip co condition requirements. Requirements. Okay. And now, finally, we can press on the run button, please. Button. Okay. And what you'll see inactive leads. Now open up, click on expand all. Okay, so you skipped it. Let's look at your uh, why it skipped it. This. Lead not works. I'll come get his record. That's not my date. Jeez, it sure looks like they equal to me. Interesting. So let's go ahead and look at get out of debug mode. Let's go ahead and look at that decision. Decision. Okay. I mean, that, I see some comments coming in. We are looking for the fact that this wasn't modified since it was created. 
All right, so the time, sir, the time, the time since creation, that's handled in the scheduled path. So in reality, this part of the flow would run six hours later. So we already know it's six hours later. Then we come and do a compare. So let's go ahead and take a look at this last modified date equals. Uh, so let's, let's, let's try last activity date. Last activity date. Is it for this one? For this? No, created date we know is a good date because that is exactly when it got built. So last modified should be absolutely equal, but it's whatever reason it's not doing that. So let's go ahead and X out of that and try record. No, 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 no. The X you were just on. Yeah, go, go ahead and remove that resource and you're going to add a different one there. Yep. Okay. And go back into the record. Um, uh, activity date. Uh, last, last activity date. Yep. Try that and go debug it again. Okay. Done. It, you have to save it, of course. Yep. Oh. Ignore that. Debug again. Skip uh, the Yep, and run it. Oh. Same issue. Yep, so let's go ahead and go back in that decision one more time. Okay. Uh, let's see. Why is that not working? Let's go ahead and look at your. Do you have the actual lead on another? Yeah, I see it up there. Go ahead and click on the lead. Uh, on the, on the, which on one the other on the, the lead, you stay. Go into your other tab where you created the lead. Oops, leave, leave that Okay, open. this? Yeah, let's look at the details. Is it of this? Lead. Okay. This, uh, this is the lead you're testing with, right? Yes, go yes. Go ahead and click on details. In details. Scroll to the bottom, please. Okay. This is it. Yeah. Right. So, let's see. that should work. Interesting. Let's go ahead and let's let's go ahead and modify the object. So, hit the gear and go to object. Uh, this the object manager, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so which which object here leads? Get yeah, so leads. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and go ahead and put a new formula field. Uh, do a formula. Yep. <clears throat> Let's see. Call this. Uh, that's a good. We want to say this lead has not been worked. So, so, so unworked. Let's call it unworked. Lead not worked. Unworked, I unworked. think it's fine. Okay. Yep. And we, and we want to make it a Boolean, the checkbox. Checkbox. And go ahead and click on insert field. Actually, 
Yeah, let me give you the one second. What we're going to do is we're going to compare the start date and the last modified date here in the formula field and produce a checkbox that shows that it hasn't been worked. And then we can reference that in your flow. What I like about this so, approach is in the record itself, you can see where it has been worked, and then the flow is reacting to that same checkbox. Okay. All right. Let me just general. It's going to be easier for me to generate the the what the paste in that formula field and instead of talk you through it. Give me one second. Okay. Um, okay, guys, I've got some questions in the chat. Yes, you will have access to um, the information if you want to build this out on your own at a later time. We will also have this recording. I will post it. Um, we'll get it up on YouTube and then I'll post it over in Slack. And so you can rewatch this too, if that's useful for you at a later time. Um, it seems like from the poll that I threw up, a lot of you were a little confused about where to even begin. And we had a nice resource shared in the chat of a trail mix for starting flows if you've never done them before. Um, I will see if I can pin that to the top so everyone has access to it. All right, so so uh, I went ahead and pasted. There you go. Okay. So I pasted two examples. The first one will do a return an exact match. That's last modified date equals created date. Just go ahead and copy that and paste that. There you go. The one just above that. The date value one re returns the one above. Yep. Uh, is it the last modified date? This formula. Yep. Grab that. Let's go ahead and plug that in. Okay. Hey, uh, Michael Rohan's asking in the chat why double equal signs? Because we're not trying to assign, we're trying to compare. It's a single yeah. equal sign would assign it. But we're trying to do a compare. Yeah, okay. Go ahead and click on check syntax. Yeah. Beautiful. No errors. Uh, go ahead and click on next. Um, oh, that, 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 don't over next. Go back. Okay. And where it says visible, just check that box. Now click next. Next. Now okay. click next one more time. And go ahead and click on save. Save. Okay. Uh, now let's go ahead and look at <laughs> go ahead and look at your record. Your lead record. You should have a brand new checkbox there. Yeah, there's no checkbox here. Interesting. There's no checkbox. Oh, you might be using a lightning page. But let's uh let's go back to the the flow. Okay. Now, so, now on the on the resource, you're you are going to have to X out of this. 
and refresh your refresh this flow screen so we can pick up that new that new thing so go ahead and refresh your screen for anyone in need of that link to the trailhead um trail mix chad went ahead and shared it in the chat so if you are struggling with flows you might want to go check that one out yep so go ahead and click on your inactive lead decision in actively okay this go ahead edit now the resource click, click on the x next uh, to the okay. resource now go back in the record and look for that new that new field we just created Good. okay uh on walk okay visit so and then so, and then equals okay you want to get rid of that as well click on the x next to created date now just simply type in true true cool. click it now click on okay. done save it X out of that. Activate it. Activate it. Just go ahead and activate, activate. this version. Okay. Great. Now go ahead and debug it. So this part uh, skip start requirements. Up, see uh, run the flow as if the record was updated. The record is updated. Okay. It's all set like this. Yep. Go ahead and run it. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and look at your decision. decision okay. no in, in i'm sorry in the debug in the debug okay debug there you go conditions must be true okay so it's showing the Record on work equals is false, and that's why it's not good. So the flow, there's nothing incorrect with the flow. There is something incorrect with that formula field. Field, okay. Unless, unless you modified, did, did you modify and save that lead record if, that you used? Because if that's that's the case, and yes, it would most certainly fall out. No, I didn't modify the lead record. All right, let's scroll down. Oh, okay. Which one did you use? Did you use that new one or did you use that other lead record? No, no, this this new one I created. All right, let's look at the details. Okay, for the for the lead record. The, the lead record details, yep, exactly. Okay. Go ahead and refresh your screen. Stay on this tab, but just go ahead and refresh the whole screen. The the checkbox isn't showing still. Yeah, let's go ahead and look at that. Uh, go, go, click on the gear icon, upper right, and click on Edit Page. Okay, Edit Page. This one, no, it's no work.
And once it loads, go ahead and click on the page layout section. Page layouts. Wait, is it this? Yeah. yeah, click on the details right there. Yep. Okay. Then then click, click anywhere in that in that area. Just tap right there. Click. Okay. All right. So stay right there. See where it says lead, lead layout all the way where it says previewed? It says previewed lead layout. Yes. Right. Click on that. That's going to take you to the page layout for the lead. Need where, okay. Where it should have added a checkbox. So let's scroll on down and look for it there. Okay, that's why we need to move it out of the edit the lead information section because that part and just move it up into no that should no that should show never mind okay. let's go ahead go ahead and create a new section you know how to create a, a section on page layout yeah. So go ahead, yep, and make to make sure it's available on detail, meaning it's there all the time. Call that, you know, unworked. That's fine. What we're trying to do here is make sure it's exposed on the detail page, not just when we're editing it. So click OK. OK. Now go ahead and just drag that, drag that okay. down. All right, now save all the way out. Click on save here. Now go ahead and look at your, go to your lead record and refresh. All right now I'll look at the details with any luck we have a new section showing off that unworked checkbox uh no section here Okay, so what we're what we're seeing here is more likely this a uh, a caching issue with with your browser. Okay. So what? Because you have a lot of different tabs open in the experience in oh. sales, and so on. So what you probably need to do to get that to show up, it'll eventually show up once your cache expires. But to get get to show up more quickly, yeah. what you would have to do is close down everything, clear out your cache, and break log back in. Oh, oh, oh. So okay. I, why don't you go ahead and try that? We're gonna we're gonna pivot. I don't know if we have anyone else in the queue. Taylor? Yeah, we don't have anyone else in the queue, but we have about five minutes. And um, I did throw up a poll. And it looks like a lot of you are a little confused as to where to begin. So Coach Michael, I'd just like you to speak a little bit to like, if you were new and this is overwhelming to you, where would you start? What would you do? Where do you go? Well, the first thing I would do is not log into Salesforce. What you want to do is really digest those business requirements and where, whether you take it off to a whiteboard, if you take it off to a pen and paper, and just kind of sketch out what you're trying to accomplish and really come up with a plan. And 
and then and only then sit back and think about what standard objects can fit this like we saw an example here where we built a, a custom object to, that holds a person so unless you have a really good reason not to you really should be using user or contact for that person the the, the difference being is if that if that person interacts with the data inside Salesforce, they're a user. If they are someone that is only informed or part of the product of what you're doing inside Salesforce, that's a contact. So, and someone hold up the t-shirt, it depends which one you choose, right? So in, in, this, in this example, a student could be a contact, but if we start building functionality where the student actually logs in and does things, now the student becomes a type of user, right? So it's really, uh, it depends, but definitely sketching out what you want to do is the way to go first and then start prototyping. And once you're in Salesforce, don't build everything and then, then test. Test as you go. You build a flow that says, take it from the lead and go forward. Test that one flow, test that one bit of logic, and then move forward. Cool. I'm like trying to summarize what you're saying for, for those in the uh, mm -hmm. in the chat here. Yeah. So take it in baby steps, you know, because if you build everything, then you don't know where to go when it's not working, when it's broken. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, go ahead. And one last one last comment on this. It's a flow challenge. Doesn't mean you have to build one exquisite flow that does all the things. Use subflows. I mean, solve this challenge with five flows that each do smaller, unique things instead of trying to do it all in one flow. There's, there was no requirement you must do this all in one flow. And frankly, that's not how you would want to build it either. Yeah. OK. Hey, guys, I threw a feedback form in the chat. It's pinned to the top. We would love to hear what you thought about today's session. And if you have any suggestions, we would love to hear those too. We read each and every one of those feedback forms so that we can build these experiences for you guys. Okay, um, we just went into some feedback from Coach Michael. Um, we hit up, we had a few um, questions in the chat. Let's see, um, do new custom fields appear automatically on an object? not well automatically it depends so at while you're creating a field custom field you are presented with choices that's why i was very careful for to not have the student click ahead right so one you're setting the field level security so if you didn't do anything different it would automatically assign basically whatever salesforce felt was the best idea not necessarily what you should be doing but it would do something automatically same with the page layout layout assignments it will if you leave that checked or check that on the next screen of creating an object it will put it on the page layout but guess what where's it going to put it who knows in our example in our example put it in a section that's only available on edit which is super challenging challenging for our particular scenario because once we edit a lead record, it's no longer valid for what we're trying to test. So, so that's why we had to create that new section, make sure it was available on the detail screen, which is the screen you see when you first log in, and then go forward. So what we'll see from the student is, so by the way, thank you. You are a trooper up here, uh, yeah, clicking yeah. through and doing things. Uh, learner, thank you learner uh once everything refreshes I, I firmly believe that was just a caching issue that we weren't seeing the, the proper value on the screen awesome yes thank you oniopmi for coming up here and letting us work through your flow i'm sure that was very useful for a lot of people to see a little bit of behind the scenes there um thank you to coach michael for your expertise and for being here to help us out um, thank you all for coming and spending your Saturday morning with us, and we will see you next time. Thanks, everybody.